Hi, I'm George Nordhaus. Welcome to Monday Morning. We're going to talk about something very unusual today. I've never done anything like this. It's called vis Visualize Your Breakthrough. And it's really talking about visualization, something we all do or should be doing, but uh, but we really don't, or we don't really understand it very well. When I read Bart's book, uh, Bart Baker is our presenter. He's the, he runs the Baker Agency down over in Malibu, uh, California. Really, really very successful. I want to tell you about him in just a second. But when I read his book uh, called Breakthrough Agency, it was on visualization. All of a sudden, I said, "Balong, that's what we need to share with agents, and not just young agents, but but older agents and so forth, because we, well, we really don't do that as much as we should. So I'm going to open the curtains here on a terrific story, or not necessarily a story, uh, but you're about to hear. But let me tell you about Bart just a minute. He is, uh, he, he, you see the picture down there with him and, uh, that's your son, I assume, Bart, huh? It is George, yes. But it's 25 years ago. <laughs> how, yes, how, old, a while ago. how old is that son right now? Uh, my son is 30 now, and he's probably uh, four or five years old there. <laughs> That's great. Well, Bort was actually a, 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 he lived in Los Angeles, and he was actually a fireman and, and worked his way. He wasn't exactly from a rich family or anything. He had very humble beginnings, and then he and his wife decided that, by golly, they were going to start an insurance agency. Right off, and I don't know all the background, but that is very interesting. So they went to Farmers. And he, uh, he got appointed, and he built an agency. Well, he can tell you a little bit about that. But uh, he and Wendy, his wife, run the agency now, and it's highly successful. It's Farmers Insurance President's Council. That ain't easy, guys, I want to tell you very much, because they have like 15,000 agents, I think, all told, something like that. Uh, uh, and, and so he's earned everything in sight. But he started writing, and then he wrote the Breakthrough Agency. The first one I saw was, uh, if an elephant sits on you, are you covered? And that's another one that, that he's been using with uh, some of our other recordings he's doing. But those are two books that every agency should have. There's no question about it. We'll talk about that later. He's doing a lot of speaking for us. But uh, we'll just go for, through. But at any rate, uh, I want to, how did you... Uh, I mean, it's a heck of a story, uh, uh, Bart, I believe. And how did you uh, come from those humble beginnings all the way to use visualization to get you where you are now from where you were? I mean, the, the, uh, I've been working with you on the basics program where you're doing uh, uh, <laughs> recordings with me and explaining the various basic insurance coverages. And you always start, which I love, because you always start with the philosophy of that and so forth. So let's follow your lead and have you tell us the philosophy behind visualization. Okay, well, George, uh, first of all, thank you so much. I really appreciate it and thank you for the introduction. I am so excited to have this conversation today because I really believe that the concept of visualization, and we're going to be going into that in more detail and a couple other things, but it's really the fuel to power our success forward and to be able to achieve you know, much more rapidly. And I have to tell you that when I first started you know, applying this and um, doing it more in, with an intention, the results just started to really increase rapidly. So being able to discuss what has been so successful at least for me, um, you know, with your audience is, um, you know, again, I'm really looking forward to having this, this conversation. But George, it really starts when I was first married um, and my wife and I were living in Hollywood, which was, you know, this really, you know, congested city and we had just had a, a new daughter. And my wife comes to me one day and she says, you know, honey, I really don't like living in Hollywood and I'd much rather raise our family in Malibu, which wasn't, you know, too far from where we were, but, you know, I, I got to tell you, George, I love my wife. We've been married now for about 38 years, and when she came and she told me she wanted to move to Malibu, you know, she might as well have told me she wanted to, you know, us to move to the moon. It, 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 was, it was that far of a stretch from our reality at that time. Yeah, fi financially, psychologically, oh. and everything. Yeah, right, just absolutely everything, but, you know, if you, if you love your wife, you want to make her happy, and so we started to drive out to Malibu on the weekends and we were looking around and you know one day we found a guy who had a garage that was in a nice neighborhood and had a nice yard and he allowed us to a you know in essence convert this two-car garage into a living quarters for us and um, 
it was, um, you know, the rent was white, and so we put a lot of elbow grease, and we ended up moving into that. And the next step then was, um, okay, we're now in the community that we wanted to live in, and how do we, you know, get to the house that we wanted to live in? So what this first slide shows was, you know, if you want to, you know, like fast forward, it shows yeah. a um, a dinner party that we had. Um, you know, last last year actually, my wife threw this dinner party for me, and there was a, you know, it was attended by, you know, all of my you know family and friends, and also the you know the president of farmers who had become a friend, and the uh, you know chief financial officer and president of commercial and district managers and agents, and I'm looking at this at this photo and the event that occurred, and I just had this incredible sense of satisfaction because it really was this full circle that had occurred. We're less than a mile away from the home that I'm living in now, which as you could see, you know, it overlooks the ocean, it's a beautiful place, um, was the garage that we started off in. Wow. But, but even wild. back, yeah, I think it's a great story, but George, but even back then, we always had um, visualization, or so I say, we always visualized success in our future. It's just that we had no idea of how we were going to achieve it and achieve it in the manner that was going to provide the lifestyle that we would like to have. And when we discovered the insurance business um, is when at least we knew at that point that we had a vehicle that was going to allow us to achieve that success. Because the fire department was great. It was a wonderful job. We had a lot of, um, you know, friends, and there, you know, there were so many wonderful parts about it. But you're a civil service employee. You know, I had to, you know, rely upon the, um, you know, the latest union negotiation to get a four percent raise. It wasn't going to create a very exciting lifestyle. So this, this slide just had such tremendous, um, you know, satisfaction for me. And again, I'll come back to that, you know, full, full, full circle. Um, I can imagine it was unbelievable. Sure. <laughs> the president of the firm and all the other people. Twenty-five years ago, you, you would you would have put out a fire at their house, maybe or maybe not. I'm not sure, but there you are. Exactly. Exactly. All right. Well, you're talking about vision. You say that the vision is the core of success, and 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 you're saying that. I mean, I know that you've said that the, the vision got you where you are. Uh, uh, are you? Uh, do you think that uh, that most people don't have a vision? That uh, they're just co constantly juggling things in their life, or, or what do you think? I'm not quite sure. You know, I never really thought about my own vision uh, as a vision. Okay. Okay. Well, really good question. So. Um, Obviously, I can't speak for most people. However, I do believe that a lot of people have goals, and goals, I think, are a little cold, um, where you come up with an idea that you want to you know, achieve something specific, and you put together the steps, but they're not really big enough. So the nice thing about a vision is that when you have vision in your life, George, you do not take into um, account where you currently are. So you don't have to... Um, have any ideas about how to get there, whereas when you have a goal established, as you know, you know, uh, concrete, measurable, and you know, all of that type of stuff, it's very uh, methodical, whereas a vision is a direction, it's a lifestyle, it's totally fun, it's kind of like that, you know, childhood dreaming that we did when we were kids that we wanted to be this or do that or have that, and it's, it's, um, it's a completely different place to come from. And when you do it with your spouse or significant other and you're on the same team and you're, you know, deciding upon, you know, all of these wonderful things that you want to have, do, and accomplish in your life, there's a lot of joy and excitement that comes from, you know, having vision and applying it on a regular basis. And do you think that most people really don't do that? I mean, they don't, they just take things as they come and don't do it? Is that what you're saying also? Well, well, I've, I've found that, and I don't know what, what is what your experience has been, but if you have friends and you're having a dinner party and you're just talking to them about, um, you know, the type of things that they'd like to achieve in the future and, right. you know, have and do and where they would like to, you know, live in the houses and the cars and, you know, charities that they want to support, I find that most people just don't have that conversation because they're so focused on the day-to-day -day yep. and the more short-term um, things that they have to 
um, that they have to accomplish. So, so vision is really a, a direction um, more than anything else. So when we have a really clear vision as to what we would like to do, and it, it, it's out there, it's a direction, but that's exactly what it is. It's kind of, George, it's the, it's the asking part of that um, you know, ancient expression, you know, ask and you shall receive. Mm -hmm. So the vision is the, is the asking. So you know, whatever location that you want to live in, it's like, you know, this is where I see myself living in the future, and you put it out there and you believe in it, and you'll find that over time, if that remains in the center of your thought process, that you're going to start to see opportunities to be able to achieve that vision, and as long as you um, you know apply it, you're going to be able to march you know closer and closer to it. But it all starts with having the vision. All right, is it that simple, really? Is it that really simple to have a vision and say it? I don't know. I'm, I've got to see that. All right. Um, you know, George, I think that it really is that simple. To, um, you know to do and that's the that's the really amazing part about it is that you don't need anything else it doesn't matter where you are currently at the moment you take all of that out of the equation so whatever your business is it doesn't it doesn't really matter so when we start thinking like that and you write it down and you go to the car dealerships and you test drive your dream car and you go to the neighborhoods and you go through the model homes of where you want to live and you look at the brochures of these amazing vacations and you just start thinking all the time and visualizing that type of stuff regardless of what it is that you're currently doing. There's just something that it's a spark that ignites within you and as long as you allow yourself to stay focused, it pulls you towards it. There's absolutely no question about it. Well, it sounds simple. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm going to do it a lot more now that you're saying it, but uh, I like your, your statement. You've said this before to me, and I think this is really the simplicity of it, I guess, right there. And that is, well, you, you say it, what you think about comes about. Um, George, this is probably my, probably my all-time favorite saying because it's something that's so easy to keep in the forefront. And um, there's an, I'm trying to remember what the book was. It may have been... Um, actually Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich, which mm -hmm. I think was written like the 30 or 40s, you probably read it. And in that book, they talk about how it's not possible to have two opposing thoughts at the same time. So see, you can't think negative thoughts and think positive thoughts at the same time. You just have to make the decision. It's going to be one or the other. So when we make the decision to think about, and that is one of the only things that we actually have control over is that that we choose to think about, that is going to have an incredibly powerful effect on our day, on our lifestyle, and everything going forward. So I think that if we learned nothing more from our talk today, I just realized that we can focus on and think about um, what is um, you know serving to us and hopefully in line with this vision that we're um, you know creating for ourselves um, it's really going to take us an incredibly long way well you know when you, you we understand that point and we don't just take it for granted I guess we begin to realize it's going to uh, help us intentionally change our thinking uh, and if so I and I'll buy into that uh, where do we start about that uh, on this thing okay sure so what I'm talking about today, I think, George, is to achieve considerable success, massive success. It's the type of success that is going to take effort and that everything is important. So there's going to be some folks that are going to listen to this, I believe, that are not going to be willing to make the personal changes and you know, potentially lifestyle changes and whatnot to be able to achieve in this in this um, you know manner mm -hmm. however those that are we need to pay attention to the details and the details are absolutely everything it's just you know what are you reading for example are you reading you know doom and gloom type stuff or are you <laughs> reading things that are um, you know educational and and taking you towards your vision and what are you know your health habits you know we obviously need a lot of energy to be able to um, do what I'm talking about doing here. We have to be in good health and we have to you know, have our physical body really together. And this next part here is that who we're hanging out with. 
there was a, um, I'm trying to remember who said it, but it, it says that we are the mean average of the five people that we associate with the most. Hmm. So if that's a true statement and we look around at the people that we are spending our you know, nights and weekends with and we see the direction that they are going and it just goes back to how serious are we in wanting to achieve the vision that we have. And if we are very serious about it, then we might need to make some tough decisions in that area. So, you know, well, what I get from this is that what you're saying is that we all think about these things. I mean, you know, who doesn't? Uh, well, health, health, we, all that. I, I do. I certainly know that. And, sure. Uh, but not necessarily because we're trying to visualize our futures. We just think about them because, uh, because they're there, I guess. But now what you're suggesting is these can be the real start of visualization. And if we do these things, at least we have a good beginning. Is that it? Well, it's absolutely true, but it's something that never stops, George. So we, we obviously have the, and I'm going to you know, use the word visualiz visualization again, of, of what we want to have, and it just has to stay in our mind all the time. So this slide here um, talks about having a, a thought process that works for you. So because it's human nature to um, get in a negative state, I found personally that if I could have some positive thought process that are kind of like canned and ready to go, that I could just realize that, you know, I'm not in a positive state right now, I'm not thinking about things that are going to be serving me, then I, I supplement it with, um, I am healthy, I am prosperous, um, mm -hmm. I am happy. I, I'm happy, I'm healthy, I'm, I'm prosperous. And I could, you know, go on for a walk with my dog in the morning or driving around, and if I start saying that to myself for a few minutes, I find that it actually changes my state and I realize it's like flipping the switch and I'm back to that, you know, mental state that mm -hmm. creates that, you know, what you think about comes about principle and it is much more, you know, attractive to what it is that I'm trying to do. So uh, do you, uh, that's a good example of your positive thought process. Do you have any what other? What do you do, George? Uh, <laughs> what do I do? Well, uh, uh, I, uh, I I I expand my vision a lot. I think I mean a good example wouldn't be mine. I had uh, <clears throat> when I had when I started Monday morning, for example, uh, I had it was about a three minute deal. I figured everybody would really like that, and that'd be really good. Uh, and uh, it, it it was okay. It, it, but I realized after a while, uh, I started thinking more positively. So I changed that. And I mean, it was a it was an actual vision that I what I really like to do is I figured if I had uh, Monday mornings recorded as uh, long as they wanted, needed to be, like this one we're doing right now, it could be you know 15 minutes, could be 30 minutes, but whatever it is needed to be, people come back to it if they're interested in seeing it. And that's that was that was a big step in my in my career now and I because I did change my vision on that now we're a year and a half later and we got 140 recorded Monday mornings the basics are coming in you're helping with that we're sending it out to 105,000 people each week because I guess I expanded my vision I wasn't thinking specifically of expanding my vision I was thinking hey it's time that we do something like that but but I guess in retrospect I'm saying gee that's the way it worked for me and uh, and so I did it so I, didn't, yeah, and I told and I shared it with my people. Well, you share yours uh, with your staff, don't you? Right. Yeah, but, but George, if you don't mind, go back to that other slide if you can. If you can't, um, then I I'll can, just go I ahead can. and talk I'm, about it. I'm pretty so, good. So that. first of all, I absolutely love your example because I've been working with you now, not really for very long, a few a few months. I'm thinking. Right. You know, let's say let, let's say about about three months or so. And right. Every time that I have a conversation with you. The vision of what you are doing with the company is, um, you know, you, the, the way you just talk about it and mm -hmm. your excitement and your enthusiasm, mm -hmm. it, it grows on a, every, you know, every week that we talk. <clears throat> um, it's so, you know, I, I could tell for sure that you are constantly, um, you know, growing um, the vision that you have Thank you. for the direction, you know, of your company. But what this slide, um, you know, talks about here that I really wanted to, really wanted to talk about is right. that it talks about um, expanding when we achieve milestones. So the rut that anybody could fall into and I, what really helped me and my agency is that 
because the vision was continually expanded the moment that we achieved a milestone, oh, yeah. it was, um, you know, we were able to continue to go up and up. So we used achievement hubs with farmers to be able to do that because, you know, I thought it was you know, pretty brilliant on farmers' part, but they have, you know, quite a few achievement clubs that were based upon, you know, profitability and retention and income and, you know, all of these different metrics. Mm -hmm. But as you achieved them, it meant that your business was doing better and better. So when we first got into business, we saw that they had, you know, toppers and championship and president's council and all of these different ones. Mm -hmm. So we set our sight on one, and the minute we achieved it, it was like, okay, we now must achieve, and this is our vision for the next one. So it's the vision of what it looked like, and then you just implement the goals, which are kind of, you know, I'm just going to call them cold because goals are just kind of process or oriented, and then we just, you know, put that in and started to do it. But when we expand our vision, it will, you know, once you achieve something, it allows you to get out of a rut if you have, and it also allows you to bust through a plateau if you have plateaued. So it's always about expanding the vision as quickly as possible. Yeah, you did that beautifully with your, uh, when I, um, because we've talked about it before, and I, I realized farmers has a number of levels, and every time you reach one, you go to the next one, the next one, the next one. Gosh, I'm afraid maybe they should stand, they could, they should uh, establish another one, so you'd have something to shoot for. You're already at the top. Now, what are you going to do, huh? Well, well, they do have, you know, they do have um, others, and the beauty is, is we now have our own. Um, you know, things that we've implemented. So, no, we're never going to stop. It doesn't matter, you know, where we're at. We're always going to have another level to, to strive for. Yeah, and you keep saying we because I know you talk to your staff. There's your staff. I, I had you take a picture of them. I know, I know that's not all of them. You, that was everybody was no, in that no, afternoon, so, huh? Go ahead. Right. No, that was I, – I didn't want to shut down the agency to get it, so we had about, you know, again, half that, half the, that many folks there that were actually, um, you know, picking up the phone and, serv and servicing clients and, and whatnot. But um, we are, <clears throat> excuse me, we're constantly sharing the vision um, with the staff of where it is that we're going. And it's not so much that it's going to create an income necessarily, but it's really because of what it's going to make us make of, make of us in the process. Mm -hmm. So the biggest one, George, was this attainment of President's Council. It took many, many years. And... Tremendous amount of reinvention, not only in the agency, but in the part of every single staff person, and specifically me, to be able to achieve that. And because we were able to make the Achievement Club, that was like you know a, a crown and the benefit. But the the benefit was in the process of having the ability to get there, because once we had that, nobody could ever take that away from us. And it was you know incredibly gratifying. And now that the team knows that they are part of that agency, they feel like winners, and they are winners. They're absolutely okay. amazing people, mm -hmm. and it's um, it's that constant communication. Sure. Do you uh, and you to talk about that vision in your staff meetings? I assume you have staff meetings. Sure. Yeah. Every Wednesday we have a staff meeting, and we talk about you know where we are and uh, where we are compared to. Um, you know those folks that might be above us, and um, you know what it's going to take to get there, and and um, and that we are going to get there. There's no question about it. And we talk about things that we need to do to be able to get us there. So it's all about um, you know constantly raising the bar and setting the vision that we will be the best that there is. Um, you know within the farmers world that we will be recognized as um, as being the top agency in the country, and it's not for any other reason as to what it's going to make of our agency to be able to operate at that level. It just keeps on pushing us to do better and better. I like that. Do you, let me ask you a, point, a question. I've been wondering about this since we, since I read your book. Uh, do you ask people you're hiring uh, about their vision, personal business? I never thought about that before, but I've never really asked my prospects that, vi that, that, that vital question. If, uh, for example, they don't say they have a vision, do you try to instill the visualization of what we're talking about today, and I'm, or I don't know. What do you think? Sure. Well, first of all, it's a really good question. I've always been amazed at how many people I talk to where I'm asking them to share what their vision is, and how many people, George, do not have a vision other than, um, right. you know, I, 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 I want it, you know, I'm, I'm going to school to get this particular degree. But that was like the extent of what the vision is. And so if it's somebody that I like, 
um, and really think I'm going to be interested in bringing them on board of the team. We talk about the direction that the agency is going, where we are now, mm -hmm. you know, compared to the rest of the country, how we're in, you know, the top half of 1% and so forth, and that we, you know, always strive to be, um, you know, the best. And, 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 and I watch for the response that, um, they're, you know, they're giving me their, you know, their, their, their body language, their, their verbal reaction, because I find that some people are, for whatever reason, I've never understood it, but afraid of success. And some people are energized by wanting to be on a, a winning team. And I find that they just get, you know, like they're like coming alive in this in this meeting. So I look at that and just say, you know, for whatever reason, they just haven't been exposed to this. So we will expose them to this. And for, you know, nine times out of 10, they end up being incredibly focused because for the first time, they now have this great vision of, um, of being part of this team. Now, I'm not saying that everybody comes on board like that, of course, but you know, those folks that do, you know, we have been successful with, um, with having them share in our vision and it becomes part of, of, of theirs. Got it. I like it. I like what you're doing. Here's an idea behind those, behind that guy there or something. Take that sign down, put one up, says, what is your vision or something? Right. I don't know. Exactly. I, you probably do or, that because or, we're, I'm just kidding right. about it, but it might not be right. a bad or, idea. Huh? Yeah. Or at least they should be able to share what the vision is of the agency Absolutely. at a minimum. Absolutely. I think that's vital. <clears throat> All right, let's talk about persistence, and then we'll wrap it up here. Persistent okay. vision. What persistent? Go ahead. Okay. So, George, we, we talked about it, um, this a little bit, um, you know, previously. Is that you know when we do find ourselves, um, you know, being in a rut or a lull, mm -hmm. it is the vision that is going to um, allow you to bust through. So, I think that if we ever look at an agency that has plateaued. It is because the vision of that business, which is in the you know founders, the owners, the people that are responsible, that are communicating with the staff on a daily basis, I believe that it is because those folks do not have a big, bright, well-articulated vision um, that is being shared with their people on a regular basis. That's a major because point. You, that's a major point you've made right there. I mean, that sentence is is terrific. I mean, that really. Uh, that really should inspire, I hope, a lot of agents. Right. Well, it's it, it's true. And those folks that, that, that have it and don't have the result, it could be that they just are doing a poor job of communicating it. However, when when people know that they're on a winning team, they want to be a part of it. And I find that people will work harder for that than they would for money or anything else. You know, money really is a secondary thing, but people want to be on a winning team. You know, they want to win the equivalent of the Super Bowl and the World Series and so forth. And when they know that that's possible of, you know, being with us, it's a whole um, different mindset because there's a lot of excitement that comes along with, with that. I can see there could. Does, does your uh, visualization uh, concept call for figures, specific figures, income, production, all those practical absolutely. things? Yeah. Well, yeah, ab absolutely. Because what we, we talked about in one of our previous um, one of our previous um, sessions, mm -hmm. um, the the three M concept, and you know the three M concept had yeah. you know three different, um, you know the, one of them was measurement, and if we just go to work and work hard, and we don't have the result that we need in order to define success, it doesn't really mean anything. You know, it doesn't say you know red cross on the door. We are a for profit company, and we absolutely must achieve our numbers. So absolutely. Our vision, which is, you know, that breaks it down more to, you know, the goals that support the vision, um, you know, must be met. I'm, sure. amazed, I'm amazed how many agents don't have goals like that, a vision. I, I just, I, I, I never cease to understand it, but, you know, people are people are people. Well, as we come into our, the end here, the last slide and so forth, uh, I know you have some major thoughts to, to, to conclude with, so go ahead. Okay, so the what this slide is really saying is that is that it, it takes um, a lot of work, and I don't want to think for um, you know a second that this is something that's 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 not going to create a lot of effort. However, it is incredibly um, fun and energizing when you approach it the way that I am, you know, talking about approaching it. And we'll go back to the beginning where we talk about 
creating a vision that is energizing and that it's fun and that it's big and it's bright and that when we realize that we truly can do have be become anything that we want there are no limitations I mean we live in the most amazing you know country in the world you know people are you know dying trying to get here when we actually go out and we start putting together the visualizations and can articulate them to those folks that can support us as far as where we want to live. I just find that energizing to me. I like to live in beautiful places and drive beautiful cars and have great vacations and and do wonderful things for my family members and charities and all of that. And when that is visualized, articulated, and focused on on a regular basis, it provides the fuel that we need for achievement. However, it does take a lot of work and it does take a lot of intention on a regular basis because if we don't focus on it with intention, we will be swayed in the opposite direction and those weeds will start to pop up again. Mm-hmm. So I would just say it goes back to that thought, George, of you know what you think about comes about. Amen. And if you could just and if you could just put that little saying like in your car or next to your desk, it's just a great reminder. I'm going to put that sign over my desk. Well, listen, you've been great. I mean, as usual on this thing, I, I love it. I love the work you're also doing on the Monday morning basics. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, Bart is uh, uh, recording uh, uh, an explanation of each of the 18 or 20 basic uh, coverages that we sell uh, as independent agents and uh, our farmers agents or whatever. And we uh, and they're great because they they go they tell you things that you hadn't even thought about about these things. They show you some endorsements that you probably hadn't thought about using. But it's uh, it's it's a beautiful job, and uh, and you're you're paying back Bart to the industry. You're paying it forward, as they say, and I I greatly appreciate that. And people should know that you're not being paid for all this. This is what you want to do to help our industry, and I greatly appreciate it. Now, well, well George, thank no. you so much. It's you know for me, it's I've told you before it's a privilege and an honor to be able to have this discussion with you and your listeners and I just want to thank you for everything that you do for all of us well good I'm, I appreciate that now if you want to get hold of board there's his contact information uh, if you want to uh, uh, get his books and I tell you guys get those books I mean you can get them on Kindle I did for nine bucks or something like that and my gosh it just changed my thinking totally uh, those two books there uh, uh, the breakthrough insurance story this one was built build on and then the uh, the elephant an elephant sits on you and that's the one with coverages so please go back to that and we'll have this on our a link on our uh, Monday morning email so you can just click on that don't forget to go back to the basics we've got more great uh, Monday mornings coming uh, Barton and I are working in the future here we've got two more we're going to do down the line that will motivate you I hope and uh, with that again I say to the rest of you I'll see you again next Monday morning